Yesterday we started our new unit on uniform circular motion. Remember what that meant. Uniform meant constant speed. Circular motion traveling in a circle. So we're talking about objects that are traveling in circles, but not speeding up or slowing down. They're traveling at a constant speed. We defined a couple of terms yesterday. We defined frequency. Anybody remember what that meant? The frequency of an object as it goes around in uniform circular motion? Yep, Gary? Okay. Yeah, it's the number of revolutions per second. It's how many times it goes around in a circle per unit time, the number of revolutions per second. Now, there was an equation that went along with that that really just reflected the definition, but that does not appear on our data sheet. Does anybody remember what that is? How did we write that? F is equal to lowercase f, by the way, right? Capital F would be force. Yeah, not frequency, but force. So make sure you use that lowercase f so you don't mix the two variables up. Frequency, lowercase f, would be equal to? Yep. Good. The number of revolutions over the amount of time that we have. What would the units for frequency be? Yep. Hertz, yeah. We could say revolutions per second. Sometimes we might even say cycles per second, usually revolutions per second in this context, but we also often say hertz. So one revolution per second is one hertz. The next term that we looked at was period. Okay, in the context of uniform circular motion, the period represents what? Tara? Good, the time for one revolution. Now, period is given by a capital T. Don't get that mixed up with a lowercase t. It's closer than big F and little f are because they're both times, right? Little, little t, though, is any time. It it's, represents the time that it takes the object to go around a circle 15 and a half times, or it represents the time that it takes the car to travel down the road 100 meters, okay? Little t can be any time. Big t, Okay, the period is the time for one revolution. Hey, if we're gonna be if we're gonna say it means the time for one revolution, then we can write an equation that, that kind of goes along with that definition, same as we did for the last one for frequency. What's the equation that goes along with period? Earl, you got that one? Good, it's gonna be the time over the number of revolutions. And the units for that one are going to be what? Zane, you got that one? It looks like your hand's up. I don't think it really is, but I'm going to call on you anyways. Yeah, you could say seconds per revolution, or sometimes we just abbreviate that and say seconds, right? Because it's a time, right? Just say seconds, or we can say seconds per revolution. Either one of those would be absolutely fine. Seconds per cycle would even work there, even though we don't see that very often in this context. All right. So we got two new terms that are both, as you can see, fairly closely related to one another because they both have the same variables, but they're kind of opposite of each other. So if we're going to represent the two of them together, we're going to say t is equal to 1 over f. As frequency goes up, period goes down. If frequency is revolutions per time and time is time per revolution, then they've got to be inversely proportional to each other. This is the equation, the one that's squared off in red here, that appears on our data sheet. Now, we also talked about speed. That's not a new term, because you've seen speed a million times in physics 20. Speed is how quickly something's moving, right? In general, the speed of an object moving at a constant speed is simply delta d over delta t. And we can use that here. Because the object of traveling in uniform circular motion is traveling at a constant speed. But we also know specifically the distance around the circle once. What's that called? Don't give me the formula for it. Just tell me what the distance is called, Seth. It goes around the circle once. What's the, what's the variable that represents the distance around a circle? You don't need to look it up. You can think about this. You know this. The distance around the circle. Yes, good. Circumference, good. What's the equation for circumference? There's a couple of different versions that we can have, but be careful because there's one of them that we can't have. Lewis, what's the equation for it? Yeah, 2 pi r. We could also say pi times d, pi times the diameter. I usually just say 2 pi r, though. It doesn't really matter. 
Um, the time around the circle once is going to represent or is going to correspond to what? Yep, capital T. It's the period. I put this one in red because this one also appears on our data sheet. So of what we have up on the board right now, what's squared off in red appears on our data sheet, but we obviously have to be aware of everything else that's on there as well. We also talked about two more terms. The word centripetal went along with two words. Centripetal acceleration and we had centripetal force. Centripetal means center seeking. That's the meaning of the word. So if you have a centripetal acceleration, the acceleration is seeking the center. It's seeking the middle of the circle. Centripetal force, same deal. Okay, it's the force is seeking the center of the circle. A centripetal acceleration is an acceleration that's directed, Zach, towards the center of the circle. A centripetal force is directed toward the center of the circle as well. How can we have an acceleration if the speed is staying constant. We're talking about uniform circular motion here, right? Uniform circular motion, constant speed. How can we have an acceleration in one breath while well, we're talking about constant speed in the next, Gary? Good, it's going in different directions. An acceleration isn't just dependent upon speed, although that matters. It's also dependent upon direction because it's velocity over time, change in velocity over time not change in speed over time. So there is a change in direction, so there is a change in velocity, and as long as there's a change in velocity, there's going to be an acceleration. This equation does appear on our data sheet. AC, the centripetal acceleration, is V squared over R. What's V stand for there? What's V stand for? Yep. Good. It's the speed, not the velocity, because it's changing. It's the speed, because it's staying the same. What's R stand for? Good, the radius of the circle. Centripetal force, well, it direct, it's directed toward the center of the circle as well. Hey, take the Earth going around the sun. What keeps the Earth in orbit around the sun? Forget about what we learned about centripetal force. What force pulls the Earth toward the sun? Yep. Gravity. Gravity, good. And as that Earth constantly orbits around the, Earth, the uh, sun at a really, really high speed, the sun pulls it towards it. Now, the Earth doesn't actually move toward the sun. It's just pulled toward the sun. We don't always have something moving in the same direction it's being pulled. Okay, if Ryan is walking across the front of the room towards my desk, and I push him towards the back of the room, he's not going to go towards the back of the room, right? He's going to go over there somewhere, somewhere in between the way that I push him and the way that he was moving. He's going to end up somewhere in between. So just because the Earth experiences a force toward the sun, toward the center of the circle, doesn't mean it's going to go toward the sun, toward the center of the circle. It just means that's the way the force is at. It, that force is gravity, but we rename it, in a sense, we rename it the centripetal force, the force directed toward the center of the circle. We could calculate the force of gravity between the Earth and the sun, but we could also say the force of gravity between the Earth and the Sun, the centripetal force, is mass times acceleration. But acceleration is v squared over r. So let's just replace a with v squared over r. Both of these equations are on your data sheet. What does m stand for there, by the way? v stands for speed, r stands for, for radius and circle, just like it was in the last equation. What does m stand for there? Bart, what does m stand for? Mass, good. The mass of the object, we're talking about the Earth going around the sun, it would be the mass of the Earth. Okay, if we're talking about the keys going around my hand, like yesterday, it would be the mass of the keys. Okay, if we're talking about the car going around the turn, it would be the mass of the car. It's the mass of whatever's going in the circle. Okay, and it's going to be measured in kilograms. i got an example for you here before we uh, wrap it up here. 5.3 on, on page 255, a DVD disc. We don't even see DVDs anymore, right? Blu-rays and, and downloads. Blu-ray, by the way, has the same diameter as a DVD. 
I don't know, to be honest, if it spins at the same rate or not. I think it does, but I'm not positive of that. Has a diameter of 12 centimeters. That means the radius of the DVD is 6.0 centimeters. Or we've got to convert that to meters, 0.0600 meters. It has a period of 0 0.100 seconds. And we want to find AC. What do you want to try? What do you want to do here? Zach, what do you want to try for this? I want to find the acceleration. Give it a try. Take a risk. Let's try A is equal to B squared over R. The equation I just wrote on the board for centripetal acceleration, right? The problem is we don't know what V is. So is this going to work for us? Well, it will, but it's not going to work right now. We need to find V some other way. Got an idea there? Good. V is equal to 2 pi r over t, equation we wrote down a few minutes ago. So we got 2 times pi times 0 0.0600 divided by the period of 0 0.100. Let's figure out what that means, or what that value is. Two seconds, guys, don't pack up yet. 2 times pi times 0 0.06, divide that by 0 0.1, gives me 3.7699 meters per second, which we're going to turn around and plug into here. Don't forget to square that, because it is v squared, not v over 0 0.060. So let's square that. Let's divide it by 0 0.06. And we get an acceleration of 236.9. Or we're going to round that to three digits, 237 meters per second squared. Which is, by the way, you ever heard of a g-force or g's? G-force is how heavy something feels, basically. How many times heavier it feels than it really is. So in this case, because the acceleration of gravity is about 10, really it's 9.81, this is about 24 times the acceleration of gravity, which means if there's something on the edge of that disk, it would pull about 24 Gs. It would feel about 24 times heavier than it really is. Okay, here's your homework. Uh, three questions on page 265, 255. All going along with centripetal acceleration slash centripetal force. Okay, see what you can do with those. We'll take a look at those tomorrow, okay?